Right in front of me is a $10,000 Mac. Now, is it actually worth it? To answer the question, we will push the new Mac Studio to its limits. From installing a full AI language model running on device, while playing a graphically intense game, and then running benchmarks. Now, before we do all of that, let's start off with the unboxing. So here's the box that it comes with. It obviously feels extremely premium. It is very, very heavy. The specs of this Mac Studio will absolutely blow your mind. This is Apple's newest M3 Ultra chip with 256 gigabytes of RAM and four terabytes of storage. It's got a 32 core CPU and an 80 core GPU. It is unreal the privilege to be unboxing this right now and trying it out. So without further ado, let's open it up. And here it is. We got some paperwork over here. The box indicates us to open it just like this. Just the packaging and boxing experience feels so good. Whoa, this thing is so heavy. Okay, and then we've got the power break over here. And then that's pretty much it. It smells like a Mac. You, you know that experience. When you open a Mac, it truly smells like a Mac. Okay, that's it for what you get in the box. Before I show you the actual Mac Studio itself, we got some paperwork over here. We got the usual, some warranty info, and a little booklet indicating us what each of the ports are, which the ports on the Mac Studio is definitely one of the best things about it. And here is the absolute beast of beasts. It's crazy how this guy can run an entire AI language model running on device. I can't wait to test that out. And here it is. Is. The power brick that it comes with is exactly the same as the one that we saw on the Mac mini. It is 100% braided, which feels extremely obviously flexible and braided. Obviously what you would expect of such a premium product as the Mac Studio. In terms of the size, here's a quick comparison with an iPhone 16 Pro Max. This is my hand, this is an Apple Watch, so you can kind of get a glimpse of, of the size. Here's the back of the Mac Studio. Here's where all the ventilation happens. In the back, we get tons of ports. The best thing about these four USB-C ports is that all four of them have Thunderbolt 5. This is an ethernet port. This is where the power comes from, which by the way, it kind of looks like a Mickey Mouse shadow. Two USB-A ports, HDMI port, a headphone jack, and the best thing about it is the power button. We had a chance to check out the Mac Mini, and one of the worst things about that Mac Mini is is that the power button was placed in the bottom. So you kind of had to do like this, this gesture to turn on and turn it off. But the Mac Studio is right here in the back. And then in the front, we have two Thunderbolt 5 ports or USB-C. And my favorite thing about it compared to the Mac mini is that you've got an SD card slot. So if you've got a production company or you're a photographer, you know how big of a deal having access to an SD card slot ready is a very big deal. And then this right here is an LED indicator letting you know if it's turned on or off. Now you can configure this Mac mini in two different variations. You can configure it to the M4 Max, which is perfect for video editors, photographers, developers, engineers, people who need as much power as possible. It's got a price tag that won't break the bank, especially if this is your full-time job and you need that power. And it supports up to 128 gigabytes of RAM. And then you can configure it to the M3 Ultra, which is Apple's fastest chipset ever on a Mac. It's basically two M3 Mac chips combined into one, which is basically designed for extreme professional workflows. I can see Disney and Pixar having eight of these in a rendering room because the craziest thing about this guy is the configuration, which is exactly the one that I have. I mean, just the the fact that you can have 256 gigs of RAM and four terabytes of storage is just absolutely insane. Enough of the talking, let's put this guy to its limits. Okay, as you can see, I'm not alone. I am joined by my studio display, which is obviously one of the best monitors to connect it to the Mac Studio. And we're gonna do a lot of testing. You can obviously just skip to the parts um, within the chapters of this video. So the part that you're most interested in. The first thing that I wanted to do is I actually just installed with the help of my producer, Yama 3.3, which is one of the heaviest AI models built onto the device itself. This is the new state-of-the-art 7 billion um, model. Meta has actually made this model in particular. And we actually installed this AI model onto the device itself. So now, using Terminal, what you're about to see right here, we just wrote Olama Ron Yama 3.3, and I can actually turn off a Wi-Fi so you can clearly see you're not connected to internet right here. 
you're going to see that this AI model is actually running on device and using the activity monitor built into Mac OS, we can see how much memory is being used. So we can ask it things like write uh, 550,000 word essay about Apple Park from an interior designer perspective. Let's see what it does with this. And as you can see, the speed that it's going as right now, we can go to the top right and see that Wi-Fi is still not on. So you can clearly see that everything is running on device itself, which is absolutely incredible. And the speed of this is, is absolutely crazy. And if we take a look at the bottom, we can see that 60 gigs and it's going up is being used by RAM and it's doing it everything on device. Nothing is lagging and everything is extremely smooth. Isn't this absolutely insane? Let's go ahead and open up Steam and play Pools, which is an insane game that will, the graphics will absolutely blow your mind. And we just, game mode is on, by the way, for Mac OS. Now this game will be played in the maximum resolution and maximum frame rate. And let's see if it lags at all. Don't forget that an entire AI model is being run in the same time we're playing a pretty much, a pretty intensive game at the same time. Okay, we're going in and take a look at all of those shadows and the lighting being run. This is amazing. I don't see any lag, no lag as of right now. We're going inside of the pool. This is fun. It's kind of scary. The speakers in the studio display are absolutely incredible. Don't forget that we're currently using a studio display right now. And the studio display is, is obviously 5K quality. So I don't see any lag. So this is actually quite amazing while we're running the uh, AI language model right here. Man, this game is crazy. Now it's time to do a Geekbench score. On the left, we've got a MacBook Pro 16 inch from 2024. This one has the M4 Max chip, and this is the M3 Ultra Max Studio that we've been checking out. So I wanted to do a CPU benchmark score. We're gonna run both of them to see a quick comparison on how they both do. So here's the results on both devices, but what I'm actually pretty excited about is not the CPU score, it's actually the GPU benchmark. And here's the results for the GPU benchmark, 146,000 for the Mac Studio versus the MacBook Pro that got 100,000. You can be the judge. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of the new Mac Studio. I'm just gonna say that this thing is an absolute beast and I totally recommend it if your job requires all of this insanity of power. You can watch more of my Mac related content over here or if you're new to the channel, you can definitely hit subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.